Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. We're still looking at the Sans Holiday Hack Challenge. You can see my avatar here. We're hanging out in front of Santa's castle. We just finished up objective one and now we're going to move on to some of the terminal challenges that can get us ready for objective number two. So my friend Shinny up a tree is over here and he's got his little terminal cranberry pie. I think I think that's what they call it here. Kringle kiosk is what we're going to end up working with. And it looks like Kringle kiosk Based off of the conversations with Shinny up a tree, there is some nod and nudge and some interesting thought that there might be some command injection in the functionality of what's available there. If we take a look at the hints, clicking on our badge and getting in the submenu of hints here, we can see that we do have command injection as a hint from Shinny up a tree referring to the terminal of Kringle Kiosk. So let's take a look at that hint just for our good learning, right? And it says there's probably some kind of command injection vulnerability in the menu terminal. So I will open up that web page and I'll clear out all the stuff from previous. But now we should be able to go see in my other tab, if I just moved along anyway, there's a note and nod towards command injection. So we're checking out the resource that they offer and it's from OWASP, right? The Open Web Application Security Project. I'm pretty sure I got that acronym right. I hope so. <laughs> uh, command injection is an attack in which the goal is execution of arbitrary commands on the host operating system via a vulnerable application. Command injection attacks are possible when an application passes unsafe user supplied data, like forms or cookies or HTTP headers, etc., to a system shell. In this attack, the attacker supplied operating system commands are usually executed with the privileges of the vulnerable application. Command injections attacks are also possible, excuse me, are possible largely due to insufficient input validation. This attack differs from code injection in that code injection allows the attacker to add their own code that is then executed by the application. In command injection, the attacker extends the default functionality of the application, which executes system commands without the necessity of injecting code. So they offer some example showcasing a Unix command, taking advantage of this cat vulnerability, excuse me, taking advantage of the cat command where they end up eventually running inside the application all the processing of what you might supply to the cat command as you would type in the links command line, passing it with a system function. When you normally use that application, the output is simply the contents of the file requested, right? You try to run this cat wrapper utility with the file name to read as it, it would expect through the source code here. And it will display the contents of the file much like cat would. So this is a simple proof of concept example, right? But if we were to add a semicolon and another command to the end of this line, the command is executed by cat wrapper with no complaint. So we can see we're running that cat wrapper application one more time. And with story.text as our argument, as the parameter that we pass in, we include the semicolon to denote in Linux, hey, I want to start a new command. I want to start another command that I want to run like ls or pwd or anything you might like. So ls in this case will run and it will showcase through the application, right, with our command injection, all the contents in the current directory of the running application. So if that cat wrapper program had higher privileges than the user that we invoked it as, as the standard user, those commands that we run could be executed with a higher privilege because it's the program. It's, it's the cat wrapper that executes this. The problem and the flaw here is that it is the program running this. It is the thing calling that system command. It is executing that. But our application, this code here, isn't doing any validation or checks or making sure that this input that we provided as the user, they're not verifying, oh, is that a file? Is it, is it really a file that I could actually read? Because if we were to do that, well, then we wouldn't be able to include a, a semicolon, a space, and another character. Uh, it'll just say, hey, I can't read that file because I that file's not a file. But because it's not doing that validation, because it's not performing those checks, we can do command injection. And that's, I don't know, a worthwhile thing, right? 
So let's go try this with the Kringle kiosk little terminal challenge here. So I'll click on that Kringle kiosk icon and it'll open up a nice little window for a command line and console application. I'll try and zoom in here. Let's see if it'll let me. There we go. Welcome to our castle. We're so glad to have you with us. Come and browse the kiosk, though our app's a bit suspicious. Poke around, try running bash. Please try to come discover. Need our devs who made our app pull patch to help recover. Escape the menu by launching bin bash or slash bin slash bash. So now you Linux guys know, okay, that's just gonna execute a regular shell prompt, right? A regular interactive console. So if I hit enter, as it says, press enter to continue, we're given this menu. We're running the application. It says, welcome to the North Pole. We can select an option, right? Number one could give us a map. Number two could give us the code of conduct in terms of use. Three could give us the directory. Four could give us this printing of the name of our badge, et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and exit, right? Please select an item from the menu by entering a single number. Anything else might have unintended consequences. Ah, there might be unintended consequences if we don't supply a number. Is that right? Is that so? Can I type in a little, you know, the classic, please subscribe. Ooh, it just errors. Okay. Uh, so I, I want to come across now, I want to try and tinker with this with the, the inquisitive, curious mind as to what can I do to break it? What can I do to make it do something different? Or where is my input? Where's my input going? Oh, I bumped the microphone. <laughs> what code flow do I have to go down? What branches of program execution do I need to like find where the vulnerability might exist, right? So if I were to try option number one, I'll hit enter on that, it'll give me the map. And I will zoom out because that is practically <laughs> illegible. And now we should be able to see it. Okay, on the roof, there's the net wars room. Looks like there's a second floor and third floor, a first floor and a 1.5 floor. The asterisk denotes the Santa Vader. Ooh, I'm, I'm excited for all this. But uh, looks like I can't do anything else other than that with option number one. Hitting one just gives me the map. Let's see what number two does. That also gives the immediate output of the code of conduct in terms of use. So I can't really abuse that. It's just printing more information. Oh, it's paginated with the more command. Interesting. What else we got? Directory, option number three. Looks like there are some options there. Information as to what elf might be where. That's good to know. How about four, print name badge. Enter your name. Ooh, please avoid special characters. They cause some weird errors. Ah, okay, so this this seems like the right location, right? If, if I have another place to put input when we can supply our own data, right? If I were to enter my name, I guess, I guess I'll do that. Please subscribe again, just to see how it looks. <laughs> and it looks like it's passed to Kause, the infamous good, uh, like programming tutorial, like Linux command line proof of concept example command. Uh, it looks like it's not even Kause, it had a little reindeer to it. I like the antlers and all. <laughs> okay, so let's try that one more time. Let's try to Supply four, and I don't know why this highlighting won't go away. There we go. Enter your name. Please avoid special characters. They cause some weird errors. Um, can I try that like example they gave us in OWASP? Let's, I'll enter John, and I'll add the semicolon and ls to like list the contents of the current directory. So originally, we saw Kause include our name, like please subscribe when I offered that. Um, but now with the semicolon, is it just being passed to that Kause program without any validation? Let's find out. Hmm. Ooh, John is in the bubble here as spoken by Kause, but I also see a welcome.sh output and that's new. If I were to hit four again and A, L, S, TAC, L, A, will I get more information? Oh, I do. Okay, okay. So I just passed in more arguments to the LS command, right? Um, a as the name, the semicolon to denote a new command to run. And I can see the output from the other commands that I might run. 
I could run who am I, I could cat et cetera password, I could do anything that we want to at this point. We have we have command injection, but we know we want to start bash, an interactive shell, right? So let's try to do that. Let's use four and then a or anything you want, right? And the semicolon to denote the new command, slash bin slash bash. Ooh, there we go, success. New achievement unlocked, we finished Kringle Kiosk, and apparently that's all we needed to do, success. Uh, I mean, now we're in that interactive prompt, now we're just in bash, but that's all we needed to do. All the commands that we could have normally ran with our command injection, now we can just run them a little bit better and easier because we have executed a shell through that vulnerable application. And that's the gist of the command injection vulnerability. Super cool. Okay, let's, uh, let's hit exit and close out of this, right? We're done with this. Five to exit out of that application. Nice. Let's see if Shinny Up a Tree has any good new words for us. Golly wow, you sure found the flaw for us. Say, we've been having an issue with an Amazon S3 bucket. Do you think you could help find Santa's package file? Okay, there's a new hint. Jeepers, it seems there's always a leaky bucket in the news. You'd think we could find our own files. DG Ninja has a great guide if you're new to S3 searching. He even released a tool for the task, what a guy. All right, the package wrapper Santa used is reversible, but it might take you some trying. We're getting a lot of hints here. Good luck and thanks for pitching in. Okay, so for our learning again, and I'm gonna keep rolling with this, let's go take a look at those hints. We need to find Santa's package. <laughs> okay, <laughs> find Santa's package file from the cloud storage provider. Check Josh Wright's talk for more tips. Okay, and there's a link there to another YouTube video, a KringleCon talk. We could go check that out if we'd like. Leaky AWS S3 buckets. It seems like there's a new story every week about data exposed through unprotected Amazon S3 buckets. And that's another link, so I'll take a look at that. We can close the command injection tab. Leaky AWS S3 bucket, once again, the center of a data breach. Ah, and this was November 10th, 2020. Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, like, look, this, we, we know us security folks, security people, like, look, yeah, you kind of need to protect everything. <laughs> like, what is it? They say uh, the, the defense, the defenders, we have to get a thousand things right, but the hackers, the bad guys, they only have to get one thing right because that's, that's, that's enough foot in the door, right? That's enough to potentially look for more access. But All right, I'm not going to drone through this, this whole article for us, but that's an, an interesting read. We, are no, we know that we're going to end up working with an Amazon S3 bucket for this next objective, right? So for finding an S3 bucket, Robin Wood or Digi Ninja wrote up a guide. Uh, are these separate individuals? Robin Wood and, nope, sorry, I might be wrong. Robin Wood wrote up a guide about finding these open S3 buckets. Okay, yeah, and Digi Ninja is his blog, so. Kudos to you, Robin Wood. Heck yeah. While catching up on some old Hack 5 episodes, I found this piece on Amazon's S3 storage. Very cool. Okay, so a private bucket will kind of deny you with an error message. A public bucket will offer information obvious difference between the two so it's easy to test for in a script and then we would take a look at different regions as to where we might find those buckets so i set up a bucket in each region and access them all the difference when accessing them is the host name and the mapping is created kind of correspondingly okay so that might be valuable pieces of information we have to be cognizant of the region but as the bucket names have to be unique across the whole S3, what happens if you access a bucket in Tokyo with the host name for Ireland? Ah, it'll redirect you. That is peculiar. We could probably take advantage of that. That must be the gimmick or kind of the vessel for the script that he wrote. So we can go put this to use, right? This bucketfinder.rb. So it's a Ruby script. You can check it out on his webpage. 
bucket finder is to look for Amazon S3 buckets. Very cool. So basic usage is pretty simple. You start with a word list and it will go off and do your bidding. You can specify which region you want to run the initial check against by using the tac tac region parameter. Script will follow all redirects anyway, even if it's left at default, US standard, everything will be found. Oh, okay, so it'll use US by default, I think that's fair to say. You can also specify the TAC download option to download all the public files it finds. But be careful, because there are a lot of large files out there. Uh, I personally do the general search and then only use this option with a select subset of bucket names. Okay. So let's go play with this thing. Let's go interact with it. I'll hop over back to our KringleCon game. And it looks like investigate S3 bucket over on the table there beside Shinny Up a Tree is kind of what we want to work with. So I will hobble over there. And let's click on this here. Another console to work with. Can you help me? Santa has been experimenting with new wrapping technology and we've run into a ribbon curling nightmare. We store our essential data assets in the cloud and what a joy it has been, except I don't remember where and the wrapper 3000 is on the fritz. Can you help find the missing package and unwrap it all the way? Hints, you can use the file command to identify a file type. You can also examine tool help using the man command. Search all man pages for a string, such as a file extension using the apropos command. To see this help message again, you can cat out the message of the day or cat, etc. MOTD. Okay, so let's bump around. I'll, I'll try the ls command, see what we've got in front of us. My microphone is blocking my eyes from the keyboard, and I do need to look every now and again. So we have a tips file. Is that... Let's run that file command. Is that just ASCII text? It is. So we can cat out tips. If you need an editor to create a file, you can run nano, and Vim is also available. Oh man, you're gonna start a war, guys. <laughs> Vim is obviously incredible, superior, all holy, omnipotent text editor. Nano, oh, I'm kidding. I, <laughs> nano versus VI versus Emacs versus said. <laughs> Every, it's the holy war. Everything you need to solve this challenge is provided in this terminal session. Okay, that's good to know. So bucket finder looks to be a directory. I can tell because that's highlighted in blue and LS colors must be on. And there is our bucket finder script that we saw Digi Ninja had put together. There's the whole readme and it looks like that's basically everything that we saw out of the web page. So I have a word list already created for me. It has Kringle Castle, Wrapper, and Santa. Hey, though, that doesn't have the Wrapper 3000. Wrapper 3000 is what we're looking for, right? Will I find anything if I were to just run it with this word list? Let, let's try it. Let's use that bucket finder, and it needs to know a word list, right? So we'll supply that word list as an argument. I'll just tab to auto-complete it here. Okay. We found Kringle Castle, but access denied. We found Wrapper, but access denied. Santa, and that redirected to santa.s3.amazon.avs.com, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that is not particularly useful. So maybe we do need to modify, and I'll use Nano, right, whatever. <laughs> maybe we need to modify that word list to include that Wrapper 3000. Does that need, like, is that case sensitive? Do I need that capital W? Let's find out. Ooh, 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 ooh. Bucket found, wrapper 3000, and it's public. Oh, and there's a package file there. Okay, awesome. So let's let's try that tack download right now. Download, whack that. And it downloaded, as I can see, that package file. So, if I ls, I do have wrapper 3000 as a directory. All right, let's hop into that. I'll cd to change directory. And now I have the package file. But what is this thing? It's ASCII text with very long lines. All right. If I cat it out, ooh, a lot of nonsense. So this, I guess maybe probably comes from my like familiarity and exposure to it. This is base64. So if I were to cat that package and pipe it into base64, minus D, 
or TAC-D. Uh, Base64 is a built-in command in Linux typically, and, and that will allow you to work with Base64 encoding or representations of data. So TAC-D will decode, and I can pipe standard output from that cat package command into the input through that pipe. So hit enter on that. Ooh, and there is a lot of nonsense and noise. So non-principal characters, right? But I see this PK at the start, which makes me think that might be a zip file. Uh, we should try and redirect this. So I will run that same command, but I will add a greater than symbol and redirect it to like something dot, I, I, we didn't even need to include the zip file because we don't know for sure. Let's just redirect it to something and we'll see that file in our current directory. Now we can run that file command to see if it might be able to detect and understand what kind of file that is. It's a zip archive. Okay, so if I try and unzip it, will it do it? Ooh, it seems to. Holy cow, there's a lot in here. Package.txt.z.xz.xxd.tar.bz2. Okay, so a lot of archives. Uh, BZ2, I know we could extract though. It, it's a compression, right? So we could decompress it or un, we could extract it with bunzip or b unzip. So I'll do that on that long package.txt.z. etc. etc. Hit enter and that doesn't seem to work. Ah, okay. Can I do it with tar? Is it bunzip2? Is that right? Ah. It is bunzip2. Okay, so that bz2 can help clue you in. You do need to run specifically bunzip2. And that didn't error. That seemed to succeed. There we go. Now I have package.txt.z.xz.xxd.tar. <laughs> All right. So we've we've peeled off one layer of the onion, right? We've, we've uh, abstracted one element. So now let's try and extract that with, from tar. So I can use tar attack x. And I'll use the V flag, X to extract, right? V for verbose and F to specify the file. So package.text.tar. Oh my goodness, I can't type. And that desktop audio, I think, is probably whining. Sorry. <laughs> uh, package.text.z.xz.xxd. Looks like that seemed to succeed. Now I have that XXD file. Let's cat that out. Ooh, okay, so XXD is gonna indicate with like a hex dump or the hexadecimal representation of all the binary data inside of a file. Um, XXD, not only can it print out this information on any file, it can also kind of reverse, or like reformulate from that XXD output and that's that tack R flag. So I could actually run XXD tack R on that package dot text dot et cetera up to XXD. Let's whack that, and it spit it all out onto standard output. So once again, we need to run the same command, but redirect it to a new file. So I'll use that greater than symbol once more time. I will redirect to, um, what is this gonna give me? Package.txt.z.xz. I, I, I miss being able to see my keyboard. <laughs> Package.txt.z. XZ. This is where all my flaws come out, right? You, you see that I hate, I have to look at the keyboard every now and again, right? Um, XZ now is the one that we need. So XZ is again another compression algorithm and there is of course a command to un-XZ it, right? If I were to un-X and tab complete, I can hit Z and you see that pop up and un-XZ passed in the file name, we'll go ahead and carve that out. And now we're left with package.txt.z. So what is package.txt.z? It is compressed data 16 bits. Uh, so I actually originally didn't know what this was. I, truth be told, I haven't seen that before. So I hopped over to good old Google, good old Uncle Google and asked him like, hey man, what, do, uh, what is this thing? Compressed data 16 bits and Classic Stack Overflow gave me a good answer. How can I uncompress .z file under Ubuntu? They suggest, hey, you can use the uncompress command. Will that work? So let's go try it. I'll hop back over to this and I'll try and run uncompress on that package.txt.z. 
that seemed to work, right? Now I have a package.txt in my current directory. Let's cat that out. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's, that's that. North Pole, the frostiest place on Earth. That is what we're looking for, right? That's the solution. Is that all we needed? Let's check out the objective. We can close that terminal, hop over to our badge, and I'll look at the objectives here. Investigate S3 bucket. When you unwrap the overwrapped file, what text string is inside the package? Yeah, okay, so we just needed North Pole, the frostiest place on Earth. And we could submit that. And there we go. All right, we finished objective number two. Investigate the S3 bucket. Heck yeah. Sweet. That was it. We did it. Another one done, everybody. That made for probably a pretty long video, but I think we had some fun. I, I, I hope you had some fun. What do we got next? Objective three, point of sale password recovery. Help Sugar Plum Mary in the courtyard find the supervisor password for the point of sale terminal. And what is the password? Uh, okay. No hints, no like no no elf I can talk to over that. I guess other than Sugar Plum Mary, let's let's explore that. We'll, we'll tinker with that and play with it. Um, I haven't seen a need to go do the uh, Tmux challenge though. The unescaped Tmux way up here with our good friend Pepper Minstics. was was that referenced? Was Pepper Minstics referenced in our badge? Let's check it out in objectives. Sugar Plum Mary, Pepper Mid Sticks, open the hid lock in the ward shop. That's the next one. Okay, so we probably do need to talk to her about the Santivator. Maybe that's something that we need to get information out of her after we finish the Tmux task, but we'll play with it. We can do that in the next video. This one's already getting pretty lengthy, but... All right, we did it. We finished objective two and we are cruising through the Sands Holiday Hack Challenge 2020. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. It's nice to be here with all of our friends, Santa Claus, the three French hens. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're enjoying this and um, I'll see you in the next video. If you did like this video, please do press that like button, you know, leave a comment, do the whole YouTube algorithm things. Please do subscribe. I'd be super duper grateful and I will see you in the next video. Love y'all. Take care.